Hey, it's Book Streamer or Demo Slots and me, Spackles Wilder here. Come watch a video in this video. I am going to be doing my dragons as mech armors. So without further ado, let's roll on and let's go into this video and let's go. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. That man took longer than I thought. Hey everyone, uh, I'm back. It's me, Colonel Striker. Let's just say that meeting was a little more interesting than I had to say. It was actually with Kama, his brother, and I'm um, Legion. It was weird because Legion comes, comes in a totally different mold of us. It's also touched to our universe, but. It just uh, not really weird. They wanted me to make them some armors. Legion wanted me to base it off of, well, make him an armor that he can actually summon at will. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Uh, anyways, they also asked me a few of the other mechs I've made that they could draw inspiration from. They would design the plans and later imbue them with magic. And other stuff, he I just gotta make the pretty much the out of shell and the all the electronics. Let's just say that the mech armors were pretty high quality, but man, oh man, were they time consuming. Anyways, the first one, um, this one came from a close friend of the um Nexus Dragon. The Nexus hero. Uh, what was her name? Uh, well, whatever it was. And funny enough, it turns out all these mech armors were actually based off of um, either villains or heroes who actually had powers, um, the same powers as some of some of the dragons from Karma's and um, what was the name? Yin Yang's dimension. First one was the um, Phantom Nightmare, but they call it the Phantom Nyx Mecha, and it does have intangibility. Trust me, that was a very pain in the butt thing to get my hands on or even make. Intangibility cores are very complicated and very very hard to make. They also wanted to give her the ability to fly, but without any connecting parts, so I gave the thing wings that have energy, like energy shielding on them, that connect them, it's very, pretty much literally nearly no weight, but man can they, man can actually generate up a lift pretty well, and as for some weaponry, they just wanted to, um, and linked arms that could be flail around like limbs, not even bloody hands. So, yeah, it was a very weird request for that one. Let's move on to the next one. The second one was actually relatively interesting. Turns out this one was based off the um, Kagoon King Dragon. This one was actually requested by Kaneki himself. Um, and ask for multiple versions of it. But he decided to have one version called the Kagoon King for himself. Each one, each one of the other mechs was known as the Kagoon King Kokaku, Ukaku, Rinkaku, or Pekaku, depending on which one you got. But I also secretly made myself a copy of, of his mech, the Kagoon King, which he actually <laughs> later had me. Um, funny enough, make me, he later had me make a, a mech version of the Gagoon Dragon. Now that one was a pain in the arse to make, especially with how freaking huge it was. If I remember correctly, the dimensions were somewhere around a, it was not the actual, actual shape of a dragon, it was more of a humanoid. It was like a, a dragon-esque inspired mech. It had wings, a tail, a draconic head, and some claws. The thing which is ugly and huge. Um, like Issei's Juggernaut Drive, that one. 
Uh, just more technological. Uh, anyways, the Bigaku is going from the tail, which is an exhaust port. Not only an exhaust port, it's more of a um, nanonite core I had actually planted there. All these cores are um, nanite cores I had to place on it with um, a power core on it. To actually, you know, power it. On the back, there's two little nanite cores that are programmed to recreate the Ukaku, which you can actually fire off. The Kokaku are actually planted within the body, which is actually, weirdly enough, they're actually planted somewhere underneath the armpits. But they can actually bleed through any of the other ports to actually... You know, spread around, which is funny enough, they're actually mainly, yeah, they may be planted underneath the armpits, but that's mainly for the um, actual wrapping around the arms. But they can also bleed through the other ports, like from the back and the tail, to cover up the legs, or to cover up the chest, via the armpits, or their, um, the Rengaku, um, tendrils. Ports. They can also cover the back and create giant amounts of armor. But that is more of a uh, secondary form that was more utilized in a um, in some old mechs I made for some people. I'm actually pretty okay with now. They actually joined Kaneki side, but I'll talk about their mechs later. Now this next one, oh boy, this next one, uh, it turns out it actually comes from a creature based from, oh, what was that guy's name? I met him like a year ago or so, um, he's a, uh, I know it's not really a good thing to say, good friend, but he was a good guy who can use alchemy, a very powerful version. <sighs> Hmm, sorry. A very powerful version of that, actually. A fact. Well, anyways, his one of the creatures from his universe was known as Kamemps. And this was later translated into a dragon that appeared in, um, Karma and Yin Yang's world. Trust me, that the later he, um, Karma used to combined with a Dracos with a Domastic Wendigo Drake and let's just say it gave birth. The um, creation the two inner over ugh, how did I put this? The two energies gave birth to a dragon that was very, very nasty in terms of um, you know, the ability to fight. But it is known for the good, um, the guy I was talking about was Thorson Smith. But the dragon I was talking about, yeah, it was a very nasty one, which was known as, um, ah, the Dracostic Commemps Wendigon, Wendigoagon. <sighs> and let's just say they wanted a name pretty similar to it but pretty much just settled on a um Akron AM shortened version of the name Dramp Dramp Dramsagon the Dramsagon Mecca let's just say this one's by far my favorite out of all of them it was actually had a few weak spots without but this was actually so that we could have more articulation but if you shoot these with pretty much a tank, and a tank round, it's going to break directly through it. Now, the limbs are reattachable, and the guy who came in asking for this, funny enough, didn't really have any arms or legs. So, I had to actually graft this onto his body. Speaking of graft, I am... I reminds me of someone else that I did it for another customer. I am never doing that again. Oh, nothing on that level anyways. But but I meant by graft, I mean like um temporarily graft the um mech to him. 
but mostly at his arms, so that way he can actually get a feeling for the control. But after I came across a type of um, a type of needle that can actually press directly into your nervous system without you feeling any pain, I asked the guy if that was okay with him. He said sure, and I just implanted that into the um, arms of the mech. Now the two tubes on it actually shield the upper part of his arm. The two tubes that are making that little circle on it actually are part of the um part of the fact that he has you know well that's where the needles are. And let's just say the guy's blood was actually very corrosive. So that's pretty much all for this one. And for the final one. This one actually comes from a dragon that was inspired from Doc Ock. Oh man, that was hilarious. But anyways, this dragon, the dragon anyways, was known as, um, what was the dragon's name? Uh, the kitchen name from what Kama told me. It was the Long Octo-Armed Drake, or the Octo-Armed Drake for short. Zero was a very intelligent dragon, and I've got to agree, this guy was really intelligent. The only reason why he couldn't make the mech himself was because he was actually being virtually crippled from his actual, um, his actual, how do you say, tentacles. It. Now, what was, uh, um, oh yeah, this guy's own tentacles, which are actually a bio, a biological metal, funny enough. I had an arm for AI actually controlling him. So not the other way around. And he was kind of a villain. But once I saw that the tentacles were controlling him. Not the other way around. I decided to, this was. And I finished the neck after my talk with. um. I just say Karma. Legion. And um, Yin Yang. I finished the talk with them. And fixed, finished the neck. Hence the reason why this one was the last one, because I just finished it, and the guy is actually really happy with it, because he actually has full control over his own body now. He says it's been years since he got that power. Years. And he's been going by the villaining of the devious Doc Ock ever since. But now he can go by the, by hero name of what the, um, Mac was named after. And he decided to call the mech... What, what did he decide to call the mech? Um, the long-limbed... The octo-long-limbed mech. The octo-limbed mech. But now he can go by the hero name of... Octo-limbed. Because of the eight tendrils. Funny enough, the, um... Biological metal, I actually had to cut it over with a, um... Some nanites. So that way they, um. Eddie say you would actually listen to him. They could still have control of themselves, but. Very more restricted. I actually placed a um, chip into this guy's neck for him via some surgery. Yeah, I might be a. I might be a mech maker, but I do have a doctorate degree in medicine and surgery. Alright. You spend too much time in the army. Especially as a mech maker, you're down to find a few hobbies. And especially when you're working with so much tech, you can actually learn the ends of out of pretty much doing surgery with your eyes closed. I literally got a robot in here that can actually fix up an arm in about five seconds. Yeah, let's just say full control over it, and he can do pretty much anything an average human can, but actually a whole lot better. And let's just say that things have been looking up for him ever since. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video because I'm afraid that's all that I'm for today. But until next time, subscribe to Adrian, Sparkle Charmy, or do my salon to goodbye and peace out, everyone.